I'm Dagny Hoping, and this is E's Live Academy Awards pre-show. And I'm Arthel Neville. We have Oscar covered, and I know Michael Kastner is down there very busy right now because he's on the front line. Michael, what's going on down there? Well, it's absolute craziness. Everybody from the crying game has arrived, and uh, as a matter of fact, we also see Joan Plowright nominated for Enchanted April, and uh, Miranda Richardson is here. We're live on E. We're British. Okay. Okay, well, as you know, it's kind of crazy. You try and get everybody as best you can. Miranda's here. Michael, I want to... I want to point out that I uh, mentioned that Miranda had won a Golden Globe. That was for her work in Enchanted April, not Damage. She is up you know, for Damage tonight. Dax, it's so hard to keep track of this lady. She's had the most incredible career. People are tossing awards her way. And, and I know I've been getting screwed up on that one as well. <laughs> I know. She's been honored for all three by the New York film critics. And a lot of people have been really impressed with her work. She's kind of a chameleon. She has an ability to shift her hairstyle and her appearance. And, and a lot of times people say, I didn't know she was in that film as well. And she can shift her accent. I, I always... I'm amazed at that. <laughs> I mean, I guess yeah. that's why she gets paid the big bucks, as they say. <laughs> and I think, too, a lot of the people are showing up early at a certain at certain times because if they show up early, they have more of a chance to be interviewed and take their time and kind of take in the whole Oscar hoopla at a much nicer pace. If you arrive late, you're rushed, you're frenzied, you're running in there. They get here early, they get a chance to say hi to the fans and, and take their time. Yeah, because these fans have waited hours to, to sit here and say hello to them and the least that they can do, and I think they agree, the least they can do is stop and say hello and chat just for a couple of seconds, if nothing else. Dags, it's kind of difficult to grab everybody's attention. Is somebody speaking Italian to her right now? I have no idea what she's saying. <laughs> I know, it's really hard. It's a timing game, it, not the crying game. It definitely is. Okay, here we Thank go. You. Miranda, how are you? You're live on E. Good to see you again. Yeah, there was a whole spitting thing we did on my show, but we don't need to get into that right now. You excited about doing this tonight? Yeah, I am. Yes, I mean, I've got sort of two hours to get myself worked up some more, and um, I might as well pace myself. That's all what I'm thinking. A lot of people, I don't want to jinx anything, okay? A lot of people are mentioning your name as, you know, having a really, really, really good chance to. Well, at least they've remembered it. It's <laughs> kind of long. I always thought it was too long. But maybe I should keep it like that name then. You think I should keep it that name? Uh, absolutely. Okay, I'll keep it that name. Do you have your acceptance speech ready to go? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I don't. Well, I do want to, go ahead. No, I, I, well, I have, I have nothing to say. No, I have nothing <laughs> You have no comment on that score. No. Jay Davidson, how, what's he going to be uh, dressed like tonight, Nadia? I don't know. I seriously don't know. It's the big sh secret. I don't know. I haven't even seen him yet. You people keep these secrets all the time with the crying game. I don't know. Best of luck tonight. Thank you, thank very you. good seeing you again. Bye bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to touch to you folks for just a second. Oh, here we go. I, I lost the little box behind me, you see, which is my earplug, so I know what's going on. Okay, Stephen. Oh, yeah, we do have the Stephen Ray interview. As I said, it's a little confusing down here. I uh, had a chance to chat with Stephen Ray as he was going in, and here's what he had to say to us. Whatever you think about it, and you know there's a lot of hype and, um, you know, a lot of razzmatazz, but uh, it, in a way, it's the biggest thing in the world. You haven't been here before. What was your response when you got out of the limo and you saw all this craziness? <laughs> I just wondered where... Do they do this every day, or is this just, this just today? I didn't. Typical I thought it was Hollywood a bit fun, day. yeah. Sure, it's fine. It's lovely. Did you Good luck tonight. The movie well, I'll tell you what, I can't exactly hear what's going on. Well, your mouth thing, and I said, Anthony, keep it up, and you will be here alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, that was always very scary. We asked him to do a little bit of Cannibal the Cannibal Lecter, and I understand there's still talk about having a sequel to that, although there, it's still tied up in rights. They're still trying to figure out who has the rights to it and uh, what will happen with that. But Jonathan Demme and Anthony Hopkins got along tremendously uh, during the making of that film as well as with Jodie Foster. So I think everyone would like to get together and, and do some more on it. Now, I think I see Glenn Close right behind uh, Clint Eastwood's shoulder with the curly hair. Well, they're zooming out now, so we can't... ...times before. That's that's right. We're talking with Anthony Hopkins. How are you? You're presenting tonight, right? Yeah. Best actress. Who are you pulling for? I'm presenting best actress. Who are you going to be pulling for? <laughs> You arrived at the Golden Globes with Emma Thompson. That's right, yeah. And, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was with Emma Thompson when she did, got the Golden Globe. Now, last year you were the subject of Billy Crystal's opening. Yeah. So do you have any ideas who he might uh, be doing a little parody on this year? What do you think? Oh, I can't predict. If I were in the prediction business, I'd be doing something else. I don't know. <laughs> what are we hearing? Have a good night. Anyway. And what's also happening with a uh, sequel to Silence? Is that going to be happening or not? Well, there's no script yet. If there's a script, you know, I'll have a look at it, see what it's like. But there's no, uh, 
no, no bookie from being with me. So. I want you to know I'm very brave to be doing this interview because I saw it, I think, on HBO again last night. And you're, yes, it was. And, and you're making me very nervous again, so I'll let you just keep walking. Very proud of it. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Anthony Hopkins. Oh, that guy is so, so good. Well, we have we have Clint Eastwood's going to be coming up here. And as we mentioned, he's been doing this for, some, what, 39 years, something like that. And the first now, probably some traffic people as well, there's Richard Gere and Cindy Crawford uh, arriving. She's looking beautiful. He's got Summersby here. The crowd's or, or rather, really, Summersby really is out. Like it's so difficult to hear, folks. Just bear with me, Dagny. Everybody's talking to me at once. We were just talking about how the crowd is just going crazy when they saw Richard and Cindy. This is a really a popular couple. And I think through the night, you're just going to see a lot of power couples. And this is just one of them. We've seen Jane Fonda and Ted Turner and Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon. Uh, and uh, Dagny, we Dagny. We, you have Clint? Yes, we do. All right, we'll go to Michael. All right, we're going to, we're, we, well, we had Clint here. <laughs> We're going to have them in just a second. It's pretty packed down here. He is a very, very big favorite. Three nominations. And uh, as we said, it is his first big year here at the Oscars after a very, very long and distinguished career. He's been directing, as we pointed out, also for 20 years. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he could be the first one to win an Oscar for directing himself. I think that's the correct terminology we want to say, if my, if my Oscar history is correct. You're and, correct. And uh, Clint... We're, we're getting closer. When there's so, there so many people down here, it's kind of difficult. The, the Italian folks are right next to us. Okay, Clint, we are live on E! right now. Congratulations on your nominations. Was it worth the wait? Uh, yeah, it was. It's, uh, uh, everything comes in its time. Some people, uh, things happen early in life, and then it dies out after that. Uh, this is just fine. I have no complaints. If you could only have one of the Oscars, which one would mean more? Best picture? Yeah, well, that would reflect on the, the crew and the actors and the, everybody involved. You know, it would be nice for everybody involved. Fantastic. Well, best of luck tonight. It's very nice meeting. We'll be pulling for you. Clint Eastwood and Francis Fisher. Awards pre show. I'm Dagny Hopin, and right now I'm with Arthel Neville, and you're watching Jack Nicholson. And Michael Kastner is standing by live with an interview. Michael? Hi, Arthel. We are with Judy Davis, nominated for Best Supporting Actress in Husbands and Wives. Got it all out. How's This is pretty crazy, isn't it? It's a bit crazy, but actually, I was quite well ordered. Oh, except that we're talking over a hedge right now. <laughs> yes, I think I've been picking the flower. Have you been? <laughs> Let me, I understand. I can't see her, but there she is. She's looking so nice. She's got a brand new movie called uh, Sliver coming up. In fact, she's engaged okay. to uh, one of its producers. What's that? She just announced her engagement to uh, one of its producers, Bill McDonald. I oh, that's true. She did. And we have uh, Marissa Tomei, who is uh, right near us. We're not going to be able to get to her for just a second, because as we said, the, the gridlock here is absolutely amazing. You know, Michael, you were talking to Judy Davis a moment ago, and when she, after high school, she joined a rock band, believe it or not. Then she went back to uh, Australia, and she started studying drama. And it's interesting that she said a number of times before that Husbands and Wives is a wonderful, wonderful film, but a lot of people didn't get to see it. And I think maybe a large portion of the audience was turned off by the whole Woody Allen, Mia Farrow scandal. And I think she said publicly that, that she thinks that's the case, too. And, you know, uh, some of the critics are saying that that is uh, her best work in an American film to date, her work in Husbands and Wives. So it's too bad a lot of people didn't get a chance to see it. Marissa, we are live on E right now. They're tossing to me. I take it. Dagny and Arthel, are we Michael, on? back to you. Okay, we're with Marissa Tomei. Congratulations. You're nominated for My Cousin Vinny. You know what? You don't blend tonight. You're looking really, really nice. I've been waiting. You know how long I've been waiting to say that to you? I would have had to wear red and just like to blend. Exactly, to completely blend. Yes. Here. You must be pretty excited. Your first time here. Yes, yes. It's a thrill, of course. What was, your, what was your experience like when you opened up the limo door and you saw all this craziness out there? Well, you know what? We overshot the entrance, so I kind of had to walk back a bit. So I got to cool down a moment. And I, it, it's a huge event, but at the same time, in my mind, it had been blown up to gargantuan proportions. I mean, I just thought it would be like reaching the sky with people. And, of course, it's a little more real than that. But you know what? <laughs> A billion people will be watching this. 
You don't want to know that. Best of luck tonight. Congratulations. It's good seeing you. Bye-bye. Marissa Tomei and from my cousin Vinny. Okay, I uh, had a chance to chat with uh, Glenn Close just a short time ago when we were in break. Okay, we're seeing Sharon Stone there once again, as we pointed out. Some of, I, I gotta tell you who I'm standing next to. Besides Sharon Stone, we have Gene Hackman who's coming right up to me. And folks, uh, Catherine Geneva is up there talking to Army Archer. And Jack Nicholson is here as well. Let me see. We're live on E right now. Can we talk to you? How are you, Rebecca? Pretty, pretty exciting night for you, I would take it. Is, is Jack, is, uh, is Jack, is Jack's right down there? Is he nervous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Nicholson is really nervous. Yeah, who wouldn't be? What did he, what did he say in the ride over? I'm not going to say. Oh, you can tell us. Huh? No, no, no. I'm not going to start now, believe me. Does this thing matter to him still? I mean, because he's, he's been in the business for quite some time. Does each nomination really make a difference to him, do you think? Yeah. yeah. He won't let on, but really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's, he's coming up. Do you want to grab him, see if he'll come over and talk to us? It's the Australians are down there right now. How, how, did, you folks, how did you folks learn about the nomination? Uh, how did we learn about it? I don't know how he learned about it, to be honest with you. He didn't tell you? No. Okay. I don't know if they send you a letter or what. <laughs> he was probably a phone call, to be honest with you. <laughs> probably a phone call. <laughs> We'll have to ask him in just a second. Thank you so much. And uh, and Gene Hackman is here as well. Gene, how are you? You're live on E right now. Oh, good. An exciting evening for you. Yes, it is. It's always exciting to be here. Um, it's just amazing the number of press and, and fans that they cram in here. It is. Now, do you have your accept acceptance speech all prepared? No. Not at all? Uh, I think that would be bad luck. Is that really bad luck for actors to do that? Well, it is for me. I don't know. If I... I'd hate to get stuck with it in my pocket, you know, having to go home with it. We want to thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Okay, we just we just spoke with Rebecca Broussard, and now we're going to uh, to uh, to grab Jack Nicholson. Jack, you're live on E right now. Are you are you live on E, Big E? <laughs> Be a little bit nervous tonight. I'm sweating a little bit, yeah. Are you really? I'm not too worried though, you know. <laughs> Each nomination that you get, does it really make a big difference? Do you really want to win? Yeah, you always kind of like to win, but I mean, you know, this category we're in, you know, uh, it's always good. There's always 10, 15, a lot of supporting actors, always a very competitive area and always a lot of good things. A lot of times the best guy doesn't even get nominated. I, I remember I really liked uh, uh, Willem Dafoe in uh, Wild at Heart a couple of years ago. I thought maybe he gave the best performance even of the year, and he, he wasn't even nominated. So, you know, it's just a crapshoot. It's only a win, no loses in it. You know who we thought was left out this year? Rob Reiner. You agree? Yeah, I would like to see him, but, you know, people that are nominated are great, so you, you wouldn't like to say they shouldn't be there, but uh, I think Rob did as good a job as anybody. Uh, well, you know how I'd like to see him get the credit for it. You know how we can tell you're excited about being here tonight? You actually stopped to talk. It was shock. I told everybody in the control room, Jack Nicholson is talking. They're like, what? 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 He's talking? What? I wanted to get Rebecca on television. You know, how are you kidding? Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you, Rebecca. We'll be seeing you tonight. <laughs> Okay, who do we... Hey, David Pamer, how are you? Good to see you. Look at all the people. I this know. is pretty exciting. It is. Listen, I have to ask you something. Yes. I forgot to set my VCR. I mean it, for E. You... So could I get a copy of this if I need it? Folks, we can get a copy for David Pamer, I think, okay. right? Okay. You all know right. what? I was worried. <laughs> Richard, Richard Gere and, uh, and uh, Cindy Crawford are right next to us. Cindy, of course, is, uh, is a TV host as well, so she's talking to the folks who pay her paycheck. And uh, Richard Gere is here as well, of course, uh, from Summersby, having a very, very good year uh, with Jodie Foster as well. It was his, interesting. his next film is Mr. Jones, we understand. They're telling me in my ear right now. As, as we said, you know it's pretty crazy here, folks. Very, very, very loud. Is that you, Dags? <laughs> yeah, and Richard Gere right now is starring with Sharon Stone in a movie called Intersection. So a lot of these people, the chance for them to see each other, as Glenn Close mentioned, and to have a good time, see people they haven't seen in a long time. I'm telling you, this Richard, is... Richard, we're live on E. Can we talk to you real quick? I've seen you on television. You man. have? I have. Thank God, and I've seen you in the movies. How are you doing? Let me ask you a couple questions. You're going to be presenting. Yeah. What you're presenting? Well, it's very silly. I don't know why they do this, but I'm presenting for art direction. Now, anyone who knows movies knows that it's actually production design. But they have this archaic title for it in the Academy, which is art direction. 
Yeah, but you get a free ticket, though. Yeah, and in a nutshell, it's our direction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's good seeing you have fun tonight. <laughs> Richard Gere and Cindy Crawford. Art direct. Art direct. Catherine Deneau, can we talk to you? We're live on E. How are you? Live on E Entertainment Television. First of all, I want you to know I practice this for a long time, okay? Uh, work, work with me. Bonne chance. C'est soi, Mademoiselle Junior. That's very nice of you. I, very good. I also practice how to say, can I uh, please validate your parking ticket, but it'll take way, way, it's way long. I'll try that a little bit later on. You're pretty excited tonight. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Let's put it that way. Very pleased. You, you've had Gina Davis. I take it she's arriving. I'm trying to see where the, there it is. Gina Davis is a presenter this year. She's going to be arriving. And Sharon Stone is here right now. So we're going to be talking with her in just a second. As we said, folks, just bear with us. If you, you've been watching our coverage, it is crazy down on the receiving line. Everybody shows up at once. You know, I wish there was some sort of union rule where they had to pace this, but they don't. Dagny knows that well. She was here last year. I, you get your knee pads on, you crash a few good men. That was the title that I completely forgot. Okay. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Emma. Hi, we're live on E. Can we grab you real quick? Can we grab you really quick? How are you? Good to see you and Sharon Stone together in one shot. What a television moment. I did, I knew you owe you lunch. Do. And I will give you lunch too, if Good. you like it or not. She, she owes her lunch. Tell you what, I want both of you right now because I want to ask you, who are you pulling for tonight? Hmm, wonder. Well, well. <laughs> Uh, uh, she voted for herself, come on. <laughs> Is that bad luck to do that? Oh, told me, you said you've got to vote for yourself. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to? Yes! I do hope so. Are you supposed to be deeply morally upright to vote for somebody else on principle? No, 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 because what if it's down to one vote? You want to make sure that you really... Are you, are you moving on? I love that bag. Why does she owe you lunch? <laughs> we'll never know the answer to that one. Emma, let me ask you, why does she owe you lunch, by the way? I do have to ask you. She's on the Golden Globes and she said, I bet you win. And I said, I bet I don't. She said, well, I'll buy you lunch if you do. Okay. Now, I, I do have to ask you, your husband's nominated tonight. Yeah. yeah. Where is he? I'm never seeing you with your husband out here anymore. I don't want to start any rumors. You're live. People are seeing this. Well, I told you the last time I was here, I got him killed so that I could come with Anthony Hopkins. But, um, but this time it's because he's playing Hamlet to the RSC. And the Royal Shakespeare Company makes no exceptions, even for the Oscars. But it does mean I've had the chance to bring my mama. That's true. Where is she? Where's mom? Mom? Just got to bring your mom on over here. This is my mother. We got to put you on national Phyllis, television here. Phyllis Delor, who is an actress, um, works with us and was in Peter's Friends. We, we ask this question occasionally of, of hubbies, but since Kenneth isn't here, how's she holding up? Is she doing okay? Oh, me? Oh, me? I thought you meant me. Oh, she's all right. It's me you want to worry about. <laughs> well, I do want to ask you a final quickie question here. You're not from the United States. We, I think it's obvious by the way you talk here. Right. <laughs> Does an Oscar mean a lot to, to folks from, from out of the United States, outside of the country? Of course, of course. It's the most famous ceremony in the world. And uh, of course it means an enormous amount, but it means an enormous amount to come. And personally, I think it's extremely generous of the Academy to vote so positively in England's direction, particularly Britain's direction, particularly at the moment, because our industry is in such a state we need all the help we can get. And, you know... Well, it doesn't help or hurt that you guys are putting out great movies, too. So well, that's, that's nice of you to say. It's true. Everybody's agreeing. Obviously, you got the nod tonight. Thank you so much. And very nice meeting you. Well, the BBC, yeah. And, and one of those one day. Where do you buy them? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a really nice guy. Absolutely. I'm going to give you my pin, but you have to promise to wear it tonight when they flash on you, okay? Will they do that? that? Absolutely. Like They'll take a picture of you. There you go. Thank you very, very much. And now, let's see, who, who's here? This has been a lot of fun. Okay, we're going to go back to Dagny and Arthel. I wanted to say, Michael, you know... Yeah. You're presenting tonight. Yes, I'm actually introducing a film, a short film uh, about women that's um, clips of all the great moments from movies uh, with women in them. Now, this is the year of the woman, according to the, the, uh, the Oscars, sort of the official thing. And the, inside the governor's ball, they have pictures of all the incredible actresses. I think I saw your picture up there as well. Do you think there's enough women's roles right now? Are you happy enough with the, with the roles you're getting? Well, no, there's not enough. It, it's not a matter of opinion, actually. There's something like 34% of the parts in 1992 went to women, so things aren't, aren't equal. And uh, I hope for a lot more great parts. I mean, I'm lucky I get a lot of the really cool parts, so 
I can't cook. Well, it has to do with the fact that you're pretty good at it, too, I think. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, you are here as a presenter, not a nominee this year. Is it a little easier on you? Yeah, much. It's very relaxed. I have nothing to worry about. If I don't fall down, I'll be fine. <laughs> what party are we going to... That the Three Stooges were nominated for an Oscar in 1934 for Best Comedy Short Subject, although I'll never understand the Three Stooges. I think it's a it's a guy thing. I like You do? Three. I'm not a guy. All right, all right. <laughs> I take it back. Call 407-W-Disney. What I think about... Live from Los Angeles, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences presents... Oscar, the 65th Annual Academy Awards. Brought to you by Revlon, the most unfor twilight in California where movie fans have been gathering since early morning outside the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. You're invited to share in the film community's big night as the stars arrive. Nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Enchanted April, the distinguished Joan Plowright, Morgan Freeman. Former Oscar winner and media mogul husband Jane Fonda and Ted Turner. Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins. Nominees for Oscars as Best Actor and Best Supporting Actress Stephen Ray and Miranda Richardson. Previous nominee for Cross Creek and a presenter this evening, Alfre Woodard. Academy Award winning actress and presenter tonight, Kathy Bates. Winner up tonight for Best Actor in Malcolm X, Denzel Washington. Nominated for three Oscars tonight, a Hollywood favorite, Clint Eastwood. First time nominee for my cousin Vinny, Marissa Tomei. Five time Oscar nominee and a presenter tonight, Glenn Close. Best Actress nominee for her remarkable performance in Howard's End, Emma Thompson. Richard Gere and Cindy Crawford. The man who marches to his own drummer and nominated tonight, Jack Nicholson. Star of Basic Instinct and one of the industry's hottest actresses, Sharon Stone. The crowd who wanted to see the stars sure got their wish tonight. A fine actor who's a presenter this evening and a welcome addition to any Oscar show, Raul Julia. From the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse who tabulate the balloting and guarantee the secrecy and the integrity of the results, Mr. Frank Johnson and Mr. Dan Lyle. Two-time Oscar winner as Best Actress and a presenter, Jodie Foster. Presenting a special award tonight, she's been honored by the Academy three times, the timeless Sophia Loren. Star of Big and in a league of their own, it's Tom Hanks. A stunning star in a league of her own, it's Gina Davis. World-famous tenor who will be performing one of the nominated songs, Plaza do Domingo. Academy Award winner and member of a distinguished Hollywood family, Angelica Houston. Best Actor nominee for his brilliant work in Chaplin, Robert Downey Jr. Nominated eight times, tonight will hopefully be a great night for Al Pacino. And that's Richard Harris and Ann Turkel. The, pre the president of the Academy of Motion Picture. Accommodations provided by Hilton. The next time you travel... They're coming by. Looks like you've got a great spot there, too. We have an incredible spot here, and the thing is, is everybody's kind of relaxed. Once you're in the inner sanctum, all the people are here. I mean, well, well, you saw some of the people we were talking to tonight. Could you believe all of the stars? We were joking about... Completely, totally stunned. It's quite an extraordinary feeling. Believe me. I mean, you try it, honestly. <laughs> Humility and uh, modesty. Um, it's all Feeling about it, it's just silly. I mean, you know, they are, they do completely different jobs to to us. Oh, Sorry. It's got it. Oh, it's got it. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, we'll let you go. I love yes, him. <laughs> I do. Am I to go now? Yes, you can. Oh, all right. Yes. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, wait. Emma, uh, at the end of your speech, you said you dedicated the award to the heralds and encouraged oh. women. Mm -hmm. And can you just expand upon that and explain? 
Um, yes, I love women. I'm very... Um, I think m that they're extraordinary. And um, I think that their history just hasn't been charted. I think their stories aren't told. And um, I do hope that this means that we will be starting to tell their stories, I mean, our stories. Um, we're all very kind of apt to say, oh, well, it doesn't matter, you know. It's all right, we'll just go and... Oh, okay, sorry. I'll stop. We're having, we're having a backup. One last question. Okay. Both our Best Actor winners. One won for Patton in 1970, Marlon Brando won for The Godfather in 1972. They had very unusual reactions to the honor. Scott refused the honor, and Brando sent Native American Sachin Littlefeather to read a speech protesting the treatment of American Indians in films. This year's nominees for Best Actor, well, let me tell you, that did not happen. Robert Downey Jr. was nominated in Chaplin, Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven, Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman, Stephen Ray in The Crying Game, and Denzel Washington in Malcolm X. The winner, Academy favorite this year, Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. So why are we going to New York? All information will be given on a need-to-know basis. But, but you, you guys didn't wait for me to introduce him. <laughs> I mean, you might have not have known. Has Clint uh, warmed the room up? <laughs> no, he hasn't. Congratulations. Well, I'm here to do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, right Thank you very much. Uh, how do you think your character? Hi. How do you think your character would respond to to this award? Oh, you don't want me to do it, do you? Yeah. Oh no. no. <laughs> Hoo yeah. My voice has gotten a little higher. For weeks now, everybody has been speaking for you telling why you should get this award, uh, what uh, it would mean to you, uh, and, and it's time for you not to just do what you did on stage at the thank you, but tell us in personal terms what it does mean to you to win this award. Personal terms. Well, I said in the other, in the other room, I was saying that I thought that with me, the kind of person I, I think that I am, <laughs> is a lot is in retrospect and you know in an evening like this you just sort of uh, uh, you d you're just dealing with the whole event and it all hits you and you're just sort of in, in, a, in, a, in a swirling around at least I am uh, and I, I haven't found I, 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 I guess it me it'll mean uh, if you ask me that question in about three days I think I could answer it for you right now it feels like I'm I'm a little on jet lag, you know, because I'm in New York working, and I came in uh, last night, so I feel that a little bit. Okay. Not that, not that that's a... Uh... Congratulations. This is so thank you. wonderful and thank so you. deserving. Well, thank um, you so much. Twenty years ago, uh, in 1972, I was in Cannes uh, when your film Scarecrow was there. Scarecrow with Gene Hackman, yeah. yeah. And it occurs to me that it's kind of an interesting circle tonight that you walk away with the actor statue and he left with the supporting actor uh -huh. statue and 20 years ago, not many of us knew who either one of you were. Uh-huh. We hung out, we hung around, we <laughs> hung in there, as they say. Who speaks of triumph to endure is everything, right? That's right. There, there, I've heard a lot lately people saying, well, this is going to be a body of work award as much as it is award, an award for the movie. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like that at all, that this award somehow tonight is recognition of more than just the work that you did for this particular film? Well, it's traditionally, you get that feeling, you know, throughout the years of, that people, uh, uh, you know, I think something to do with having been nominated eight times, but there are wonderful uh, actors uh, who have... Uh, uh, not ever received an Oscar. So, you know, I really wasn't sure that I was going to, uh, to receive. And I don't think, I don't know that the Academy works that way. I, I guess uh, they're, but it, it could be. And I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I've been, I've been getting, yeah. There is an organization for the blind called The Lighthouse. Yes. That you worked you worked with them. How closely did you work with them? Oh, very closely. They, they were very uh, um, uh, instrumental in getting me to do what I did because they, they took me into their facilities, they showed me around, and I, I, I got to meet with, uh, you know, various uh, blind people and talk to them. And uh, they sent representatives to help me when I was filming. Oh, they were just invaluable to me. We have a camera with them tonight. Is there, they're watching. Oh, great. Oh, I'm just so grateful to them. I'm just so grateful to them. I think they were so generous and helpful to me. I realize you're still reeling from winning this award, pardon the pun. I, I well, wonder about um, 
where you'd like to go from here, whether this frees you up to do something creatively that you wouldn't have dreamed of before. Well, um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I guess this uh, is, um, it, it, it represents, I don't know that that, that is with me. Since I have been in movies for like over 20 years, 25 years close to it, and uh, uh, you know, you've, you, you sort of learn to uh, swim in different tides and survive through things and find your way through things if you do so indeed survive. But uh, perhaps it will mean something different in my life. Uh, um, I don't know, maybe retirement. <laughs> if you had a wish though, what would that be? If I had a wish, uh, I tell you, I, so many of, of you know, I, I feel so lucky, you know, so that uh, it's hard for me right now to wish for anything else. I got this. I got s so many things that have happened to me that are... So I don't, I don't know about that. I, I guess I uh, would wish to... Uh, and I think this must say something. Continue to try to do what I, you know, can, you know, do what I like to do, which is work, so... Mr. Pacino, your, your comments tonight about... Um, here I am. Your, <laughs> your, uh, I'm comments, flying. <laughs> congrats. Uh, your comments tonight about young people and being this being so encouraging, yeah. that was very touching. Well, well, it was, because that girl, and, and, I, and I had to write it, because I have a, I, I guess, when I get up in front of a large audience like that, and with all the, I, I have to, I, I had to read it, and uh, I, I, I read it, and I hope it came communicated because I was reading the thing I was looking down and all so maybe I didn't communicate it. but the, the young woman did uh, make an impression on me because she was truly uh, uh, um, uh, encouraged by, 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 by me what had happened to me in my life knowing that I came from where she came from and I thought that was very uh, that was an interesting thing and uh, I mentioned it tonight because uh, it's, it's possible that uh, you know a lot of people watch this this thing and seeing me get this might might encourage some people. I'm right here. Not only did you get an Oscar, they gave you a standing ovation, which is pretty rare. Ah, what did that feel ah. like? All those people, your peers. Well, it feels uh, like you uh, you're you're at so, you know you're, it's a bit of a you're in a bit of a dream. You you you, you say it's happening. <laughs> you think, well, gee, <laughs> it's just um, don't stand. You know, it's okay. <laughs> That kind of thing, a little bit, and then they do, and then, you know, it reminds me one time when I was, uh, although this wasn't, wasn't the case, but it's hard to get the, when you're in theater a lot, like I am, and you do plays, uh, and you do a performance, and then you come out at the end, it's a tradition, it's part of the thing, and audience applause, and you bow, and that's the thing, and I was many years ago on a Merv Griffin show, when he had a talk show, it was one of the very few ones I did, and understandably, after after that bad experience <laughs> so i went on the show and the first thing i did is when they started applauding now naturally i hadn't made a movie nobody in the audience knew i was and there was an applause sign which of course i didn't see <laughs> so they started applauding me and so i i bowed and i went all the way down and i realized I was down there too long, you know. <laughs> and I knew I had to get back up, and I knew I had the whole show, and I was finished, you know. I was just finished. So, you know, the tendency when somebody applauds is to bow, but when it's out of just, when I haven't just done a performance, and I just go up there, and it is, it's, but it's, it's you get, you know, you gotta just sort of go with it. It was great. It was great f a feeling. It was a great feeling. Right here. You know, um, it should happen to everybody, you know. Really. It looks like that, that Oscar likes you. Um, <laughs> you're holding on to it like a that's little that's baby. That's, that's a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> Long night. You gonna sleep with it tonight? Mm, well, I'll be on an airplane tonight, actually. So it'll be with me. You know, I'm sure over the last couple of months you've felt both a lot of excitement and, and stress. How do you yeah. keep yourself grounded? Well, uh, usually I, the good thing is I, I, I'm involved in doing doing a movie now. It's always work. Always work keeps keep, keeps the focus on on. You know, so I, I got I got two projects that I've been working on, which I'm very happy I've had that to go to, to keep the uh, to to equalize the uh, neutralize the uh, excitement and and all that. Can you check that through in the baggage compartment? <laughs> okay, one last question. Another. Oh, okay. You, you, you had just... your hand up before. Uh, you have sat there for about seven times and they haven't called your name. Tonight they finally called it and you gave by far one of the most emotional speeches. What exactly was going through your head 
at the time? Uh, well, I guess when when it's like when you're sort of the favorite, it, it, word got out that I was the I was the the odds favorite. You know this this kind of pressure, and you say, well, gee, you know, all of a sudden I'm the I'm the favorite, and I haven't been before, and you think, well, you know, if I don't uh, get it, you, how do you, you say, hey, look, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so you try to. Last question over here. You look so happy. Um, I did. And, That's good. I'm glad. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> good performance. <laughs> Since the lady already suggested seven times before you didn't win, it's hard for me to imagine that somebody as accomplished as you would even care that much about winning. Well, tonight. I tell you, it's, it, is, you it, is, it is, it is, it is, it is, well, it's a, it, 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 it's just that it's a part, is, is it, it, you're excited, it also is a relief. One, either, everywhere, I've never, and I say this, uh, and I've said it to people close to me, and they can vouch for me on it, all the times I've been nominated and haven't gotten it, I have never felt bad ever about that. I've always felt glad to be nominated, and most of the actors that I know have had the same feeling. You know, it's, you just don't, it's not, it just doesn't, it's not that way, unless you've sort of built it up. A little bit, I, would, I wonder what I would, how I would have reacted if I, if I didn't get it this time, I don't know, because it was a little bit different, because the, uh, the thing, the pressure was on to, to get it, Does and I... Does that make a difference sort of, to you, in your mind, in your heart, You've got Oscar for your show for the rest of your life. Does it make a difference? I couldn't tell you that now. I think it's a gr it's a great uh, gift right now. Like I said, it feels like it's a it's a wonderful honor, and I feel grateful for it. But the difference it'll make is uh, is something I, I I couldn't tell now. You know, <laughs> some people you know they get an Oscar and you don't hear from them much anymore. <laughs> I knew an actress, a very young actress. You can't get me off when I'm on. You can't. It's, it's part of the deal here with me. Knew an actress got, got, a, got an Oscar and then quit. So, you know, things can happen. Are you going to quit? Oh. So far, no. But <laughs> what are you working on now that you're going back to? I'm doing Carlito's Way in New York City. Carlito's Way. I, I'm sorry. Can you hold it up? The old hog, you know. Can you hold up the <laughs> sure can. It, Oh, no, no, I'm the bad guy. I'm the one that says, you gotta go, you see. They all hate me. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe an homage to the future of Westerns, but it sort of demythologicalized them, and uh, that was uh, intended, but uh, that doesn't mean I want to really stop them, because I think they're a, gr a truly great uh, American art form. And I'd, I'd like to wish anybody who uh, takes them on great luck, and that, and possibly if they can get a scripts as good as David Webb Peoples uh, had written for me, then they'll uh, they'll be equally as successful and have a great time. It, it, there aren't many uh, art forms that really emanate in this country, and the Western movie, I believe, is one of them. On the left. I know you've had a lot of members on your crew who have worked with you for 25, 30 years. I'm wondering how you're going to have a special celebration with them around this. Uh, I'll just probably put this in, in the production office and uh, tell them that this is uh, what you, you all were responsible for. I think especially Best Picture because Best Picture is sort of like everybody involved. I mean, not that both of them are in it. A, a, a picture, I know people love to uh, sound off about auteurism and all that sort of thing, but I think every, uh, every picture is an ensemble of uh, men and women who are working very hard and, uh, and it's nice when they see some kind of uh, little tribute coming up their way. Yeah. You've won both of these important awards and you had Billy Crystal serenade you in your lap. Did, yeah. this, move, did this go according to script for you? <laughs> these are happier than Billy. But, uh, <laughs> But, uh, no, he, he was terrific. I, in fact, I was amazed at the way he handles the show. He, he does a, just a terrific job. And he came down there, and he sat in my lap, and he wasn't sweating on me or anything. Uh, <laughs> which I, I thought that was, I said, he's really cool. He's really cool under fire. Did the rest of the evening go to script for you, go according to script for you, getting both of these awards? Oh, yeah. Well, I'd like to. We were up for nine. I'd naturally like to have had all nine, that one. But uh, I'm the, you know, uh, the way it is is uh, the way it is. <laughs> Right now, are you excited, or is this just another accolade from Hollywood? Uh, no, I'm excited because uh, we can forget about this and go on to something else. I mean, like back to work. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited. I genu genuinely uh, had a good time with this whole thing. It always kicked off by the LA critics in uh, December when they all of a sudden gave a, a, gave the picture a 
five different categories, and, and I, uh, it, it came as a complete surprise. And, and at that time, it was hard to believe that a picture that came out August 7th would still, uh, in a multiple release, would still have that kind of memory held over. So, Claudia. there we are. Thank you very much. Oh, nice set of bookends. You've just seen Clint Eastwood, the Best Director winner, with some interesting thoughts on the whole Oscar nomination process. And before that, Al Pacino. Michael Kastner is going to be coming... It's like a baby. Oh. Well, it's only because I don't want to drop it. My hands are all sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction when they called out your name? Just sort of, I mean, it got, I kind of, I went com sort of very still inside. Mm -hmm. Sort of shock. Numbness. Is it over yet, or are you still no, not? No, I'm still completely going <laughs> to, you now, know. I, I have to ask you this. What else, folks? What do you think? A nice chain here? I think we're talking a pendant. I think so. Or maybe I could just try very, very hard to get another one and wear them as earrings. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure seeing you. And say hi to your mom. And okay. tell her not to worry. I have my new ribbon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> That live at the uh, at the governor's ball, and we were talking with Ms. Marissa Tomei, who you have you have one in your hand. That's right. When we last <laughs> talked to you, you were a nominee, and now you actually have a statue, and it's very heavy. Yeah, yeah. Can I try? <laughs> yes, sure. Really? This is you're really worried I'm going to drop it. This is incredible. When when they called out your name, I'm going to give it back to you because okay. I'm nervous. When they called out your name, what was your reaction? Well, I was nervous. I was. I don't know what they, what you could see on the camera, but I, I, I know that I gasped. I was shot, shot out of my seat. Did you have a speech prepared? No, of course. I mean, I thought of. It, on the, like this last week, I thought of people that have meant a great deal to me, uh -huh. and but I didn't, you know, get it together or think of how to say it. But I. I just trusted that if it would happen, that I, I knew how I felt about those people and that that would come out. Do you know for the rest of your life, right in front of your name, people are going to say Oscar winner? <laughs> so I hear. It's like Not a PhD. <laughs> Congratulations to you. You really, really, really deserved it. And you're, you. you're blending now. You're doing okay. Oh, thanks. Bye-bye. And that, of course, is Marissa Tomei, who won for Best Supporting Actress for My Cousin Vinny. And a biological clock is ticking just like this. I'm doing all of the movies for you tonight, okay? Back to Dak. <laughs> Being a product of this generation, I, I was in a very kind of MTV moment. I just, it was just kind of pop to me. And it was very, very surreal. And it was just like one of these, it, it was like a, I, I, surreal is the only way I could say it. And it, kind of cartoony <laughs> okay before I get the next one I've been reprimanded the young ladies talent the talented young lady's name is Marissa Tomei instead of Tomai and I apologize Thank you. <laughs> next year you, you said here. when we talked to you at entertainment tonight you said that you had a nightmare about this that you that you had when you were young young and up and coming and uh, we wondered how this compared with that's a nightmare? Well, the, My, uh, about winning the award and what would happen. Uh, oh, about the tripping. That was the only nightmare I had, which was like, and I, and my heel did catch on the back of this beating, and I turned around, and I was like, I, I saw my friend in the audience, and I was like, can you believe it? My worst nightmare is coming true. I'm going to fall in front of everyone, but somehow I gained my balance back. <laughs> in the back row. I teased you about being the great American hope. <laughs> Right <laughs> you know, it's never been uh, boiled down to that, but I, I feel proud, but I, and I'm proud to be an American, but it wasn't about that. <laughs> okay, right the character that you played in, my cousin Vinny, was it just another woman from Brooklyn, or did you have somebody specific in mind that you sort of based your character on? Um, I had some, I had a few people in mind, and then it was a lot of what Dale Lawner had written. He, he wrote an excellent, excellent script, and, um, and then imagination and little dust of magic. <laughs> Go over here. Nationalities aside. Sign gown designed by Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel. It has some silver beading. <laughs> Oscar by the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> way up. <laughs> it's 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 weighty, like the like like what it symbolizes. 
Nice. For a live on E, I'm going to switch over on this side. Congratulations to you. On live E. Well, here I go again. Thank you, Pat. I got my little... Um, Pat Kingsley, t making sure that you have some beverages here. It's been so a big night speak. for you tonight. It has. Thank you. You've been doing more interviews out here and, and just talking with everybody. We can tell you're pretty excited about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't usually well, talk just, to the press. It's better as it goes on. <laughs> no, no. It's fine. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I guess it's... It's part of the, uh, I guess, part of the whole thing. So the spirit of the thing is, is, is so. Is it getting a little easier for you now that you know you're an Oscar winner? Well, I hope it gets easier for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I like to think it's getting a little easier in the last five minutes. No, it's, uh, it's, it's. It, I hope it gets easier now that I got um, something to say. You have a very know. close friend here. I mean, you're clutching oh. it like it's, well, you know, like it's his, a baby. He's very tired. <laughs> We've had a long night. <laughs> Long wait. <laughs> Does it really, is it sort of frosting on the cake for you? Because you've been nominated a number of times. You've had a, a long and very distinguished career. What's it mean to you? You know, it's hard to say right now. I think that in time, I'll know. Right now, it's a relief that this is sort of, has happened and that I've gotten uh, uh, th th this, this wonderful g uh, gift or prize. And uh, I don't know what it'll mean, finally, except that it's... Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Because for a lot of people, you know, they get better roles, but you're Al Pacino. You already get great roles. Yeah, I would imagine, yeah. If, yeah, it's, it, it does have, when you're first starting in your career and you get an Oscar, I think it has a different effect. Uh -huh. I don't know the effect it'll have now. Maybe I'll retire or something. No, you're not allowed to do that. No, I, I think everybody will agree with that. No. Where's this going to be going? Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta get on a plane very shortly, actually, because I got a film tomorrow in New York City. I'm in the middle of making a movie. You get so, no break, you're an Oscar uh, winner. Take uh, no breaks at all, huh? Tell them, will you? I, <laughs> so, if they're watching right now, give Al a day off, all right? Please. So I'll be, I'll be, um, what will I be doing? I'll be getting on a plane in a couple of hours and going into work. And I guess, uh, He'll get some rest tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds good. Don't forget him on the airplane. I'm going to say one last thing before sure. Pat takes you away. I want everybody to notice. Are these combat boots here? Because I noticed they're, they're a little bit different. Nice, comfortable shoes for the Oscar winner here. Congratulations to you. A long time coming. Al Pacino, Oscar winner, of course, for Sin of a Woman. One hoo before you go. hoo -ah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I had to ask him that, you know, Dagny. I just had to. Al Pacino. We're having a great time here. Also, why does Al keep on mentioning the word retire? Has he got something in mind? We, we I don't. I don't think so. I think he's probably joking because you know a lot of people do say, um, "What do you do now that you've had the Oscar?" And for people like uh, Marissa Tomei, uh, who uh, Tomei, I, I always goof up her name. I think she'll accept that. It's it's going to mean an awful lot because they're Oscar winners. They're very early in their careers, you know. But when it's Al Pacino, he's been around for a while. I think it's uh, it's something nice to have. It's a recognition from uh, the uh, the Academy. But I think Al Pacino is going to continue to have a lot of good roles to come, and I don't think he's going to be retiring. We'll have a chat with him about that before we leave, okay? All right. I do think there's something about him that's just a little humble. It's kind of it's really nice to see. What's that? Oh, there's something about him that's kind of humble. It's just really nice you know to what? see. I really do think he's like that. And Dagny, you know this because you interview a lot of people as well. When somebody does want to do interviews, a lot of people maybe at home think, oh, he's stuck up, he's a jerk. A lot of people are just very, very shy, and he happens to be one of them. I think that's the true Al Pacino that came through tonight. We just got a chance to finally see it for the first time. <laughs> All right, Michael, good job in talking to him. Thank you. We've got plenty more Oscar excitement still. Right now, congratulations to you. Nice seeing you again. It's been three hours. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time since we've chatted, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh... It's been a long evening, yeah, to say the least. But a pretty happy evening, and also one long, long in the making. Uh, it was, it was a very happy evening. Uh, but you never know, you know. You start, um, you start speculating at the beginning of the evening uh, when my editor uh, Joel Cox won. I thought, oh my God, that's a good omen. And then all of a sudden somebody else loses, and you go, oh my God, it's a bad omen. And you can go back and forth all the time and play that game in your mind. By the time you've sat there for three hours, your mind starts doing tricks on you. Well, I asked you so earlier. By the time you forget completely what you might have thought you might wanted to say uh, when you get up there. Well, I asked you earlier, if you could only have one of your three statues that you were nominated for tonight, which one would you get? And one of them is in your hand, and that's for Best Picture. The best Picture, uh, I feel very strong about because it's, uh, it's sort of reflective of my whole crew, uh, the whole cast. Uh, everybody who started with this thing, from art directors and uh, and and every, everybody all down the line, it was 
uh, right down to the craft service and every, everyone who contributes. It's because um, this picture does travel on its stomach, so craft service is important. <laughs> Everybody's involved in that. I want to thank you very much, and I want you to know you probably have the most exclusive set of heavy hands. You know, that's uh, great oh, for yeah, bicep training great. and everything. Can we take a real quick look? Great for your biceps. <laughs> <laughs> Schwarzenegger, I'd love these. <laughs> Thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank Best you. tie tonight, too. Okay, right. Clint Eastwood, a double, double winner tonight. We're going to take it on.